Hey everybody, thanks for joining me for Quick Tip Thursday. Today's topic is exploring Instatone within the new Photo Effects Lab. Instatone is a feature that allows you to choose the tone and uh, light from one image and transfer it to yours in a very quick manner. Then you're able to take it into the main preview area of your photo effects lab and work with the blending options to really make it your own unique tone. It can give you really amazing results very, very quickly with just a few sliders. So we're going to talk about the technology itself and go over several different ways of combining and blending your Instatoned image back with your original to get your final image. Okay, let's jump on into Photo Effects Lab. So I want to show you just a few, this is my original image. Again, Instatone technology allows you to instantly apply different tones to your image and it's this module over here, it can be accessed under the Instatone tab and you have several different libraries where you can peruse through different images, get inspired, see how the tone from one image looks on yours and then quickly apply it back. So let me show you just how quickly or how different these looks can be with Instatone. I have several different before and afters. This is my original image. It was kind of a gray, not really exciting. And I took this image into Instatone several different times to get very unique looks. Here's this first image. This is just quickly taking it in, selecting an image, working with my blending modes. If I go up to this layer, you'll notice that I'm actually in my soft light blending mode, not normal. When it's on normal, it really doesn't look all that exciting. So one thing to remember when you're in Instatone is that you can come into your layers palette over here and really work with it a little bit more to get something that really starts to stand out. I also usually come up to my adjustments and do a few things with my adjustments to get some pop out of it. So we're going to go over that workflow. Let me just show you a few more before and afters. Basically just to show you that you can quickly get very unique tone and uh, light coming through these images that completely change the feeling and the mood of each image here and it happens very quickly. So we're going to go through this. Let me show you one last one. Here we are. And each one of these has some sort of different opacity and some sort of different blending mode. So we'll go over those two things really quickly as well. So I'm going to delete these layers, the Instatone layers, and we're to our original image. I'm going to go ahead and duplicate because again, in using Instatone, I tend to always use some sort of blend with the Instatone. So let's go ahead and take a look at it. Over here on the top left, you'll see your preview image. Let me get rid of my thumbnails there. Okay, and then you'll see several libraries. So basically you can open up two of these top libraries are actually internet sites. So you have 500pix.com and 1x.com where you can open up to, it opens up to their homepage and you can select an image, something that might stand out at you, something that you think, oh, I like this, I want to see how it looks, click, and it's transferred to that thumbnail or the, pre the preview up top on the left. Now, a lot of people ask, how does this technology really work? And what it is, is it's based on the RGB histogram uh, for the image that you're selecting. What it does, it tries to match those, um, that histogram to the histogram of your own image. So it does change that histogram a little bit and applies the tone uh, where it sees in the source image to your own image. Now, before, when we first were going through beta with um, the Instatone and everything like that, we were applying the full effect. So it gave some crazy colors um, and it really was never very good looking afterwards. You had to work with it a lot. Um, after applying the tone. So what we did, we um, went in and we actually, I didn't, the development team did, went in and actually added a couple more different types of adjustments on there so it's not completely fully applied, only parts of it, only a certain transparent part of that tone is applied. So it's kind of hard to understand the technology behind it, but for those that are wondering how it's really working, how it's pulling from your source image to the actual preview, that's the basic idea. 
I personally just like to click on things and see how it looks. So <laughs> you can use the 1x library, you can look, use anything, and if you get inspired by something, you click on it and you say, you know what, that might look really good once I do some blending options. Maybe I wanted to get a really blue sky and change, um, change the whole feeling of the image. I can remember this image. So you'll see this is the thumbnail for the image I just selected. And I can move on and continue through my libraries. We also have a photo library that we provide here for you that you don't need the internet for. So even if you're not connected to the internet, you can still use this tool. Most of these images are coming from Topaz users and Topaz pros. Some of them are coming from stock imagery as well. You can click. I really like this particular uh, setting for this kind of very moody image here. I'm going to remember that. Then you can go to this web image search. I actually typed in Tower Bridge a little while ago and this is what comes up. You can type in anything, um, just bridge instead. Then all of these images of bridges will show up. And this does, of course, need the internet to be, to be accessed. But this is a really cool way to um, work with this feature as well. And again, you just click and it's applied over here to your image. You can also use My Photo Source. My Photo Source lets you take the tone from one of your own images on your computer. So you can click My Photo Source, you can click Select, and come to a folder of images that maybe you want to use. Maybe I want to do my intro webinars, select the folder. And all of the images I have within that folder are going to be displayed here. And you can select tone from one of your images and apply it. And it's a really cool way to be able to give yourself a consistent tone on all of your images. So once you find something that you like, let's go ahead and maybe I like this one. All you have to do is say apply to layer click apply to layer and there it is. Now again one thing to keep in mind is that it does not necessarily you can easily blend it really well with your image so it's more of something to start off with it's an idea whenever you get that tone transferred to your preview. Now I can come in in my blending modes I tend to start there and just start scrolling down Oops finding something that I like, but I find that I tend to use with the blending modes the overlay, soft light, or hard light majority of the time. just feel like that gives me the most, um, uh, the ones that I enjoy the most. So I'm going to say overlay for this particular one. And then I'm just going to hop on into my adjustments, make a couple adjustments, open up my contrast. I love using this dynamic slider. If you've been to some of my other webinars, you know that by now. <laughs> it's a really cool slider within this particular program. Maybe take some of my highlights down, my whites down, get some tone back in this area that's being clipped a little bit. Resolve that and now if I need to even take my opacity down and blend it in with my original image, I can do so with my opacity and my layers palette. So very quickly we went from this original image kind of bland and not very all that exciting, to something that has a lot of tone, a lot of mood, a lot of feeling in it. If you don't necessarily want, if this is something you get to and you're like, I wonder what it would look like with these other two thumbnails that I have over here in my Instatone area, you can just make another duplicate of your original image. I'm going to turn my top layer, which had that pink Instatone applied, and then Make sure I have one of my original copies selected and just click on maybe one of these thumbnails that I like and say apply to layer. So I can quickly get many different looks with this Instatone and that's the idea is that you can change the whole mood, the whole feeling of your image with this Instatone and really um, get inspired by these images within the library. Let's do maybe the overlay here too. Take that opacity down, contrast down, dynamics up. And again, here's my original and here's after. I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to you guys so I can answer some questions. 
Uh, Janelle says, how do you undo it when you click on a picture and don't like it? Janelle, there's several ways to undo things. You can actually use the undo redo arrows up here on the top. So this will just take you back through all of the different steps. And you can continually press this until uh, you're satisfied. <laughs> um, or you can come over here to your history. And the history tab is right next to the Instatone tab. And this is a complete history of everything that you've done with the images. So I could actually go back to where I had my five, la my five that I layers in the beginning when I showed you, since that is part of my history. And now we're back to that history as well. So then I have all of these different ones again. You can also just press Control-Z or Command-Z. Glenn says, is InstaFX in with the Photo Effects plugin? InstaTone is part of the Photo Effects lab. Um, it's not sold separately. It is um, a feature within this new program. So there are several things within this new program that are unique, and this is one of those. So that's definitely why we're covering it here today. Janelle says the preview doesn't seem to change, though. Oh, the preview over here is not going to change unless you are selected, selecting a different layer. So as I maybe select this layer, you'll see that this is my original. You'll see that that view is now over here. As I select the next layer, you'll see that that's the... So it's whatever layer you have selected is what's going to be in your preview and what is going to be taken into um, the library or what is going to be affected by the, uh, the image that you choose. Let's see here. Wayne says, can you selectively brush in the effects within your photo and use different opacities? Absolutely. So let's say um, we like this image. What's going on here? There we go. That's my, okay. Let's say we like this particular layer, um, this kind of really moody, um, tone that we've selected, but we don't like it on the sky. We want to, or we only want a portion of it on the sky, not so strong. You can easily come up into your masks and, and work with it that way. Um, so if I only wanted to, and because this is a quick tip webinar, we'll go over this pretty quickly, but if you want to know more about using these masking tools, I'm actually going to be posting another quick tip webinar from last week later on this afternoon. So I'll be posting that, and you can check it out on our YouTube channel. But basically, let's just paint in about a mid-tone on our mask. Brush size like that, flow, hardness down. And I can easily get just part of it. And this is an edge aware brush right now, so I can easily come in and just affect my sky, even in between these little areas, without affecting my towers or the bridge itself. So very easily are able to do what I think you'd like to do. Now if you'd rather paint it in, you can also do that by inverting the mask first and working with a black mask to start off with, just to give you an idea of what's going on there. Uh, you can see that the towers haven't been affected even though my brush, and you can see over here in the masking area exactly how sensitive that edge aware brush is. It just really notices the edges in this image. However, if you want to reset and then invert your mask, you can then start off with a black mask over here, and you can paint on whatever value you wanted to. So you could actually paint in as well. If you only, for this image, it, I would think painting out is going to be a little bit easier, but you can still use that edge aware technology. Just paint it in on the tower, not affect the sky. Just doing this real quick so you can see how it would work. Maybe come across my bridge here. Ooh, it did affect the sky just a little. This edgeware technology is based on color, so this kind of gray of the bridge is kind of leaking over into the sky. That's easily fixed, though. Okay, so there you go. That is how you would paint in or out certain effects. I'll show you that again. Here's before, here's after. All right, everybody, thanks so much for joining me for Quick Tip Webinar. I hope that you are able to join us next week for Quick Tip Webinar. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.